Well, hello there, and welcome to the Ego James Podcast, episode 33. We're back at it again. We're doing it solo. As much as it may displease you, I don't give a damn. We're in here. We're keeping it consistent. We're keeping the vibes just right. As I see my YouTube channel is growing, and I see that the people on TikTok are being more receptive because I give them what they want. We play a little bit of Rocket League. We engage a little bit. And then on top of that, I give you music on one end. I give you podcasts right here. I mean, this this is no other better way for us to connect. There are so many outlets. I I feel like I'm giving my hand out this way, hand out that way. If I could, I would be like Goro from Mortal Kombat. But either way, we're moving forward and we're enjoying the rest of today and the rest of tomorrow because... Like I said, it's like four in the morning as we start this podcast. But what I want to start off with is, does anybody even watch the Olympics anymore? You know, the the ice skating, the X Games, and all this other stuff that's going down. Because I was asked the other day, hey, did you know the Olympics is on? I was like, no, I, I had no clue. And, you know, when I find myself in those predicaments of asking me, what is today? What is tomorrow? What uh, Do you have anything planned for the next, I guess, weekend or so? And I, and I question, like, I do have a booked weekend, of course. And then when somebody tries to volunteer me for said book weekend or day or so, my time is valuable. Your time is valuable. So where do you think I like being scheduled for shit around your schedule? You know what I mean? I may be more free than other people who work nine to five jobs. Granted, that's awesome. But the fact that I'm whispering still bothers me. (laughs) No, I just like whispering. It feels like I am. And I do, I do not apologize for that. But can we just move on with the fucking episode already? Jeez. Yeah, I have my notes over here. Let me back up a little bit. Um, There are some good news coming out of February and being Aquarius season. It's beautiful. And um, happy birthday to all the Aquarius people out there. If it is passing your birthday or is your birthday coming up in the next couple of days or so, you know, happy birthday to you if we don't. I happen to get the podcast rolling and I fuck up another day. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm I'm wiping my hands clean there. But can we move forward and talk about masks coming off? Maybe that's, maybe that's a birthday present to you yourself and you hate wearing this shit. Maybe you had dental procedures you've had for so long and you're like, you know, I have glistening pearly whites. Why do I got to cover this shit up? You know, I've already gone through this whole hiccup of having this virus multiple times. Yada, yada, yada. But we're still trying to protect one another. I get that. But it's also, on the other hand, we've already kind of been through the hump of it, the two years, you know, moving the goalposts over there, move the goalposts over there. You know, everything is tentative. I get it. Trust me. I'm the most tentative person you'll ever fucking meet from, hey, maybe I want to release my project on this day or no, I'll release it a week later because I ended up fucking off another week. You know, excuse, excuse me for being, you know, (laughs) you know, this is people's lives though, but you could quite argue, you know, some people live for the projects, whether you do or you don't. You can let me know later on if you if you listen in on this. Um, where was I going to go with the Olympics? Because I'm losing topics and I am taking that criticism to heart. Trust me. And I'm not I'm not really butthurt about it. I'm more or less taking it and applying it to these next couple of episodes because now the fact that I film this at the wee hours of the day, even though my co-host or people who have been guests on the show would be up for this. If I was to tell them, like, hey, you want to make an all-night bender? or You know, I, I get it. Or if you just happen to wake up a little bit earlier and you want to have some bagels and smears. If you haven't had any bagels and smears, you're not living. 
you know, it may be if I could watch some Olympics and not be totally, I guess, bored by it. I mean, it depends on the event. You know, it seems that I've always watched the swimming event. It seems like that's the only thing the Olympics has to offer is the swimming events. The Michael Phelps scandal of him smoking weed, him eating 13,000 calories. You you can't eat 13,000 calories. I don't care how much you swim. You got to have some weed to go along with that 13,000 calories. And like, who's to say he's like not aching, you know? I, I get swimming is easier on your joints, but this person is lapping at least 200 yards. I want to say that's how long a pool is. No, I'm wrong. I could be totally wrong about that. We're going to use our good friend Google here. And we all forget that Google is a thing. Like I had to bring this up to uh, my cousin, the Lumeister. You know, he was a, he was a guest on the show uh, a couple times. And, uh, you know, we're talking about going into the dating game and Online dating has just been dead for some reason. Maybe just to him. Other people find love in hopeless places and they get married off there. They uh, have long-term relationships. They have partners. Me and my partners. I don't know why that annoys me the piss out of me when people call, well, you know, I was with my partner. Yeah, me and my partner and I. You're not solving fucking crimes together. That's not your partner. Just call him your boyfriend or your girlfriend. My partner. That I'm done with that rant for today, you know. Keep me posted, as I would say. How long is a pool, a Olympic pool? How long is an Olympic pool? How would you uh, uh, address that? Well, if I could spell it. Then again, yeah, it's 4.30 in the morning, and bear with me here. Olympic pool. How many Olympic pools in the UK? How Olympic pool size? That's where we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it, and then it's gonna become a trending way of Google. Fifty meters. Okay. Fifty meters is one hundred and sixty four feet. Okay, that's nowhere near the size of a football field. I was wrong, but either way, you're doing laps like back and forth. So, just imagine that hours upon hours you're doing that. We back off of that shit. You know, just get, we, we give the guy a break. After the so many years, you know, now that it's legal, well, federally not legal, well, go fuck yourself, okay? Don't, don't come around here and, and give me your schematics, okay? Your little tiny, minute details, okay? The little footnote asterisks. Not really. Ah, I don't blame you. You might if you if you're listening to this podcast and you're just in the middle of the car and you're deciding to take out your road rage on me, I am happy to have you here and yell right back at me. Yes, indeed. I believe I can fly. I remember writing this note down also, imposters and motifs. What I was gonna address is the Marvel posters. I was gonna address Every type of movie poster, because now all of a sudden people are like, well, there's nothing original on that poster. Why does Marvel keep uh, copying and pasting the same shit? They're just voguing. That's it. It's it's for the it's for you to see who's the actor starring in the shit. Like, did you not notice that like even movies back in the 50s and 60s had a motif of Westerns where like the guy with the drawing, they had a certain look to him. They were drawn and this and that and. And, I mean, I can make up so many examples of how these posters and these, I guess, these packages are made for you to enjoy and to indulge in the entertainment, okay? The inter- the entertainment in itself of movies is purely subjective. And I get it. I get it. You 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 delve so deep into this. You you get tired of the same old thing that you're fed from Hollywood, that you're fed as a medium. But as numbers go down, okay, and and they they do all their recordings like, this is how they like to see it. This is how our audience is receptive of it. They're just basically pointing a mirror to you and saying, this is what you like. You've shown that you've liked this, so we're going to keep feeding you the shit that you like. Get it now? 
I guess not. Maybe so. But I just I just wanted to address that because I'm gonna put up an example to the left over here, wherever I'm pointing. I have to invert it. You know, it's all in the editing process. You'll see it if you're watching this show live or if you're listening to it in the car. You know what I mean. Let me let me let me break it down visually for you for the people who are in the car or in their office and you're not watching this on YouTube and somehow you're you're on Spotify or the other one, iHeart and all the other ones. So you have your focal character. You have your you got your your Spider Man in the middle, you got your villain possibly off to the side, doing a little side thing. Where are you looking? Looks off you know, looking stoic. Nothing over there. And then you have the other person who just looks slightly to the camera like, yeah, I'm right here. I might just be a side care. Like, like in Shang-Chi, like I'll even point that out. Shang-Chi, you got Aquafina looking, has a serious look on her face. When the whole movie, she's going, oh, 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 Sean, oh, 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 Sean. So you, so you're telling me that you're a freaking ninja from China and go. Like, that's not entirely what's going down. I was an assassin trained by. But you look at her on the poster. That's me, Aquafina. I forgot her name of the character in that movie. Katie. Katie. Yeah, yeah. I had a crush on a girl named Katie. I was a freshman. She was a junior. She had that uh she had that perfect Mormon girl look. But she wasn't blonde. You would think like I I'm I'm giving you a visualization of how she looked and it's like Oh, you know, you think of a nice uh, Mormon girl with blue eyes and blonde hair. No. She had brown hair and blue eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gotcha. But then uh funny story about that, now that we're gonna relate it back to the whole dating game and speed dating that I recommended that my cousin would go do, and I told him I would go do it with him, so I think we're going to talk about that again once I have him again as a host. And boom, boom. But I want to talk about it from my point of view without the interruption of the telephone or him being here. So essentially, you know, we're going to go do it together and you know, talk talk, and talk about how we like our interests. And like, how do you like your coffee? Well, you know, I like it with a little bit of caramel. Oh, God, you say caramel. It's caramel, you fucking asshole. It's like, oh, uh, Sorry, uh, pecan. Oh, it's pecan. God damn it. And then you, the girl of your dreams doesn't want to fucking be with you because you say pecan, you, she says pecan, and there's the altering differences. Like, how does speed dating work, you know? Like, speed dating just... I feel like, I feel like if you're the right type of... Uh, if you're in your hoe phase, I feel like speed dating is perfect for you. Like, say, if it's like, oh, I'll probably bone you I'll bone you and possibly I don't know you probably have snegma around your tip of your penis or oh your uh your vagina looks like it uh tastes like copper and pe- uh, and pennies and you know what I mean when it's a little bloody like you can just you smell the little bit of the ovulation or you know I'm getting gross and all that but everything dealing with the human body has a level of grossness to it so my fucking elbow. Uh, here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus and the Frosty the Snowman with my favorite cup. And I forgot to grab water. So if my voice starts to sound raspy and I don't feel like taking a pause, um, please forgive me. But back to the dating thing. Um, speed dating. I'm really curious to try it out, and I hope it all goes well. I mean, they have this uh, thing that was scheduled. From the 9th to, I believe, the 16th. I, I, I typed in speed dating Las Vegas. Local Las Vegas. How are you doing? Uh, you know, uh, so I work as a, uh, an engineer in the studio of uh, so-and-so. Oh, really, do you? Yeah, I worked with Pharrell, and I did this. No, you're a fucking liar. You probably just got them coffee. <clears throat> I don't know. When you get in the industry of like doing arts and uh, shit like that, it, it's 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 those moments of like people flexing of who they've worked with, and you kind of like, huh, do I care? I don't know, man. I, that always seems to happen, you know. You flex, you flex on who you've worked with, and you know, we've 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 been there, we've done that, you know. You have that one person who's got a little bit more clout than you. He's like, yeah, I I know him. Oh yeah, man, I worked with him. He, 
He fucks with me. Dap, give me some dap. Oh, that hurt. That hurt more than usual. But speaking of which, and I feel like it, they played it out in the liberal arts department. Why would they change? They changed the dates on us. Oh man. Oh, there's a there's an event tomorrow on the 11th. Video speed dating filter off. Oh God. Video. Nobody wants to video chat anymore. Okay. Let me let me go on this. I know I did it on the podcast. I know I did the remote bullshit, but I hate doing the remote bullshit. It's the fact where you got to hear this tinny telephone sounding and you hear the other person on the other end. I mean, how how do I sound on a telephone? Like more nasally than usual? Because I know I sound pretty nasally. Like when somebody tells me, like I had, I had a coworker tell me, she's like, oh, you know, you kind of sound like your dad. And uh, I'm like, I just imagine like, what my, what would my dad sound like as a rapper? And it's just me. It's just my voice. But then again, people say I changed my voice and I deepen it a little bit. And it's just out of habit. After doing hip hop and rapping for, I don't know. I lost I lost track of how many years of, of lyric writing. But you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll be for sure. The first time I released a project was 2014. So that's when it officially started in my in my timeline now. I don't want to say like, oh, you know, when I was in high school, because I was in high school, I was recording stuff, but it was more for fun. It was just little bit things here. And I never thought to make mixtapes. I was I never liked that side of it because I felt like I want to make my own beats, but I was terrible at making my own beats. So I never really delved into going over other people's beats, even though I would like I'm, I'm so old to the point to where I was on the MySpace days. And this is where our speed dating begins. Oh, really? You had a MySpace? Well, yeah, I'm only 21. Oh, fuck me. I'm all, I'm 28. Like, oh, really? And you're an older man. Yeah, I don't got my shit together. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, what am I, what am I to say? <laughs> like, my, co- my cousin was telling me. She's like, who knows? You'll meet your future wife there. Yeah, people don't like getting married these days. I mean, people my age are still getting married. Blows my mind why. Um, Because of the divorce rate. I think the divorce rates haven't gone down. I could be wrong. I could look up the statistics right now. But, yeah, let's do it. Another Google. Have divorce rates gone down? I don't know. It feels like some hair or bug on my face. What is that? Is that air? Is that a spider? What the fuck? Jeez. Hold on. Do I have divorce rates gone down? Increased. Okay. How do... Okay, here we go. Both marriage and divorce rates in the United States declined from 2009 to 2019, but rates vary from state to state. As the same... At, <clears throat> at the same time, the U.S. divorce rate... Fell nine point seven new diver- new uh, new divorces per one thousand women, age fifteen and over. What the fuck? Age fifteen? Who's getting married at fifteen? Who's making these life decisions? Let me let me get this down. All right. Oh, this is where it comes into play. Here comes the nineteen. Can't say the word anymore because it gets a little sketch. So. According to divorce records, lawyers and relationships coaches across the United States, divorce rates appear to be declining after surging briefly during the first few months of said pandemic. Wow, really? You know, I was hearing something a little bit about that, but it's that hearsay news. So when someone tell, tell, says an article out loud, don't you feel so informed when somebody says an article out loud? And you don't really have the cited source. You just kind of given that little, that little title of it. It's like, oh, really? Well, let's say that, and then everybody spouts off their opinions. That's the best way to, uh, I guess, spread uh, misinformation because of paraphrased hearsay type of talking. Until somebody, until you do your own research. If you're going to go around and do your own research, this is the, you're properly finding a way to cite your sources. No. 
Excuse me, sir. We mur- we work blue collar work here, okay? We don't have time to be looking up that shit. If it don't make money, I don't want to hear it. It's true. I can agree. I can attest to that. A lot of people, if it doesn't make them money, why the hell are they even talking about it? Because that's what makes the world go around, kind of, sort of. For many people who don't know how to save, it doesn't mean shit. All right, so what is the number one cause of divorce? Because that is a tab I opened up, and we're going to talk about it. According to various studies, the three most common causes of divorce are conflict arguing, irrefutable breakdowns in the relationship, a lack of commitment, infidelity, and lack of physical intimacy. Oh, I can't get my dick hard. See, my, I guess that's what it is. Or possibly the wife gains a little too many pounds and then, you know, somebody gets a little shallow howlish and, uh, yeah, just doesn't see their partner as attractive anymore. It happens. Stuff, little minute things happen. Like, I remember around the time I got broken up, there was funny. It was funny. Like, um... Uh, this Vice article came up, or this Vice video. You know, when you're on Snapchat, you're scrolling, and they have their stories that just happen to be sort of relevant to your life. Um, I was I was watching a video based on um, somebody just randomly waking up and hating their partner for some weird reason, and it's a psychological reason, being that I I, I can't understand why their chewing just was so annoying to me or the certain way of they smell and they hated them but then like they they did a video where they kind of did a retrospective and it's like i kind of regret those feelings and i miss i may i had uh not gone so brash and it was just me and my insecurities yeah a bunch of shit like that vice how we, vice always has me thinking that's why i like what's what i like about them but it's also they have some freak show shit going down and I'm not to be the one to judge because I'm a freak show myself. I'm not going to go there. But it's just, it goes a little off the deep end. I'm talking like when those people talk about like little puppy play shit they do. And they're, they're basically dressed up in gimp outfits and they pretend to be dogs. That's where we kind of uh, steer the boat. Nope, I'm not that crazy. I'm not that fucking whack. Whack-a-doo. Um, but yeah. But maybe those marriages, those people who got married and like to play dog and, you know, literally, I, I feel like those people who like to play dog can't say the reference of, oh, this, fucking, this bitch put me in the doghouse. I mean, that, that to them, that's like, that's a pleasure. That's, 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 that's a, an improvement. I feel like they're like, they're in bed together and just like, you know, <laughs> You've been a good boy today. You're going to the doghouse. Guy literally fucking dresses up as the dog and then walks over to the doghouse. <laughs> you know, I'm just playing these scenarios in my head. And that's where I think I'm a yeah, nutcase myself. Because I play these scenarios in my head. And the fact that I'm have I have this podcast that I just love to just hear myself talk, you know. Can't I can't I can't find any better way than to get these doubts these thoughts out other than podcast and occasionally a vlog you know when I when I'm editing the vlog on my phone which I have one that's is in the banks right now but I'm like do I release it do I not do I hold it do, do I put it out so I just I leave it on here this is the perfect place to lay the stamp down to hola cómo estás that's what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. I scrolled down a little bit more. This one's made by Time. Is it time.org or time.com? I guess it is actually Time. Ding, 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 ding. Why are millennials causing divorce rates to drop? Because millennials don't can't afford to get married. But the ones who do end up having to bust the load. It's like, oh, I have a baby now. Now I have to go through the, the little cycle of... Having a family, hating my life at parts. But then they, at the end of the day, they're like, I love it. This is what life was all about. But me and my career, me and my career, until some dick comes along and busts in my walls. Did someone hurt you? Did someone I feel like I just, I, the reason I talk to myself in that way, because I'm, I'm imagining the retort, the people who say, 
or listening in on this. There's the, there's the retort. If you have an inner monologue in your brain, which I know some people don't, you know, I don't envy you. You know, I like the inner monologue in my head. It it allows me to process things. But I think the people without the inner monologue just have pictures. To me, that's that seems really elementary. It's like this is what a dog does: bark, bark. Like how I how I picture their inner monologue is is a kindergarten teacher like coming up with a book and just going, "Yeah, there you go." <laughs> like I love I love when I love when teachers they they uh, they would read. I think that's what I miss about being in elementary or being a kid. It's like, and the duck pond, the duck went into the pond and submerged himself into the water. There you go. Look at that. Do you see that? Do you see the illustration? Nice. All right. Okay, children, nap time. Yeah, but I wanted chocolate milk. Sorry, we don't serve chocolate milk anymore because Michelle Obama doesn't want us and our fat kids, you know, to gain weight anymore. So she took off the frosting off of Pop-Tarts, even though Pop-Tarts are bad for you in general. Hi. Look at the illustration. Damn, I'm just on one. I'm sorry. I was just on one this episode. We caught up with a lot of shit. We 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 delved into a little bit a little bit more of my psyche after this whole whole debacle came about, you know. But we're we're still in this. We're still we're still rowing on this boat, even though we're avoiding the freak shows with the the dog costume shit. And I'm not even talking about furries. You know the ones I'm talking about. They they dressed up in leather. And they had the dog faces, and they 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 were like in a dog park, and fur, furries are on another on another level too. But I haven't seen much of them lately, so I'll leave the furries alone. But what about the pastafarians? <laughs> I love the pastafarians. You want to know why I love the pastafarians? You can make up any excuse you want for work as long as it's something of a like a, an exemption, whether it be personal or religious usually it's religious so you can't really you know harm you can't really invade on somebody's religious beliefs until you got that one manager who like takes you off to the side and's like um i know um that this has to deal with your religion and uh yeah i we do appreciate and we do not try not we try not to discriminate okay you gotta listen just hear us out but uh, could you not wear that? And it's just company policy because if we let you wear it, then we got to let everybody else wear it. Okay, so don't, don't do that. They, they, they hit you down with that one. And then you have to kind of go, you got to rewind that back in your head. And it's like, uh, do, I, do, I, do I go on the end of saying, you know what? They're right. This is company policy. And they, you know, I shouldn't be the special one. Fuck that. I don't believe in that anymore. I thought about it. It happened to me, and I said, you know what? You're, you're right. I should, I should just, I shouldn't right now. I shouldn't just, you know, don't back down from it. Because if somebody can bring in a fucking colander, colander on their fucking head and call themselves a pastafarian, you can do pretty much anything now. So my advice to you is do whatever the fuck you want now. If it makes you look like a jackass, you know, that's my leftist liberal side talking now. So I'm gonna let you just roam free because that's the real world. And then somebody will judge you from afar. Don't don't get mad at people when they judge you from afar, because now you've broken the mold. So expect some sort of judgment or criticism. You know what I mean? Don't, I don't know what you expect to be like, well, I'm taking your ass down. You made fun of me. Are you? No. You are the balance in the equation. That person is the other side of the equation. It all works out. Don't forget that. That's my word of advice. That's my deepest thought that I'm going to have right now. Because we're going to close it off with that. I hope you people enjoy your Friday, your Sunday, because baby, it is Super Bowl Sunday, and I'm going to say Super Bowl. Shut the hell up about the big game. Uh, I just, like I said, censorship annoys me. So we're going to enjoy the Super Bowl, the big game, the championship. 
going to watch Joe Shiesty take on Matt Stafford, and we're going to have some chicken wings, some beer, some more beer, some more chicken wings, some pizza, because that's the American dream, baby, okay? Everybody says baseball is Amer- America's pastime. No. Get the fuck back. Shut up, okay? Nobody watches baseball and says, oh, you know, I watch it for fun. You don't watch it for fun on TV. You go to the damn game if you're going to watch it for fun. Go to the stadium. Go to a go to an actual game because that's the only time it's fun. It was when you're fully immersed into the setting. Someone trying to make me watch baseball on a couch, I will go over to them and strangle them in their own house. I do appreciate the gesture of you, you know, putting a little smorgasbord out, but to have me watch nine innings of a game that doesn't have a fucking clock and some people are just standing around chewing gum and spitting seeds out on a field, no, we're done. Don't do it. Don't don't ever do it. Hockey, on the other hand, that shit's fun. We're gonna, we can watch that on the couch, but I'd also like to watch that shit in person. It's, it's about getting the immersion. All right, are we going to end the show or we're going to end the show? We're going to end the show right now. So... If you liked what you wanted to hear, if you wanted to even interject, like I say every single episode, egojamespodcast at gmail.com. Email it, stories, suggestions. Go over to Instagram and go egojames underscore NTP and follow it. And you know what? Hit me up in a DM. Tell me I'm sexy. I'll tell you you're sexy back. And then if you want to go on Twitter, find out how many porn stars I follow And then, you know, follow them yourself because sex work is actual work. Let's uh, follow me at uh, uh, Northtown Ego. There you go. That's my ad name. I used to post it on the the banner and the thumbnail, but now I don't. And it's just going to be in the description down below, wherever you're at. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's a visual medium now. We're having good times. Divorce rates are dropping lower and lower and lower and lower. And I uh, <clears throat> I got to take a breather. All right. Have a good night. Have a good morning. Love you all.